I'm J.R. Church. Welcome to today's analysis of the news. And we have Chris with us again. He is the writer and director of these two videos called The Secret Mysteries of America's Beginnings, The New Atlantis, and then Riddles in Stone, The Secret Architecture of Washington, D.C. Let's talk about Francis Bacon and his connection with, uh, uh, with Jamestown and also a little side note about uh, Shakespeare, shall we? Sure. Well, uh, Bacon, according to David Ovison, in uh, one of his books on the history of the dollar bill, he talks about how Francis Bacon was one of the heavy financiers for the Virginia Company that uh, founded Jamestown. And uh, if you, in fact, if you study the Great Seal for Virginia, the goddess that appears on the Great Seal with the helm and the spear is really the imagery of Pallas Athena, who was the goddess that Bacon claimed inspired all of his work and his writings and so on. Mm. Uh, and Bacon is, has for centuries now been believed to have been the real author of the Shakespeare plays. And uh -huh. what's interesting is over in England, you have a divide. You have two camps on Shakespeare. You have the, um, uh, those who are with the Royal Shakespeare Company, the RSC, and then you have those who are there, there at Stratford and then you have those at the Globe Theater, uh, which is the rebuilt version of Shakespeare's theater. Those at the Globe Theater believe that Bacon is the real author of the plays, and then those at the uh, uh, RSC, they reject that notion outright. You know, we even went, we, we present both sides, but we interview the leading expert in the world, a guy named Peter Dawkins, uh, about Bacon and uh, the idea that he and his company of poets were the real authors of Shakespeare. Mm. And then we show the other side, where we have uh, somebody from Stratford-upon-Avon, which is the home of Shakespeare, uh, refute those arguments. And so you get to hear both sides both of the sides. issue. Well, JR, you know, in, in, when I went to college, uh, Francis Bacon was called the, uh, a, a, uh, the father of science. He's called the, the father of logic. He's mm -hmm. a great logician. Mm -hmm. uh, the syllogism, you know, is usually attached to Francis Bacon. He's thought of as just an academic. But Chris, in these DVDs, documents another side of Francis Bacon. And that, mm -hmm. that is, he, he was a keeper of the keys of esoteric knowledge, and a lot of what he believes has filtered down into United States policy. He lived somewhere around 1610. That was a little, a little ways past uh, the discovery of the New World by uh, Christopher Columbus in yes. 1492. So 100 or so years later, here we have Francis Bacon. And he must seem to have the idea that uh, what Christopher Columbus found was the ruins of old Atlantis uh -huh. mm -hmm. that Plato talked about. So he set about to devise a, a method or a way by which this new world could be developed as a new Atlantis. And this this then comes uh, to the concept of Jamestown as they established this new Atlantis. Uh, and then came along the pilgrims. Mm -hmm. Tell us the difference between Jamestown and Plymouth. Well, I think, you know, Jamestown seemed to come with uh, some of the old world ideas, the idea of, you know, the, the nobility and then the serfs and so on. And Jamestown initially was not a very successful colony. Uh, then the the pilgrims landed at Plymouth with William Bradford. He became their leader after uh, their initial landing, and he was the chief governor for more than 30 years. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bradford implemented private property ownership based upon the teachings of the Bible, how God had given the children of Israel all their own plot of land and so on. And so he believed that this was the best way because it was God's way. Mm -hmm. And it was private property ownership that really inspired the... Um, uh, the pilgrims and the different families and so on to be motivated, you know, to recognize that whatever they labor for, that's theirs to keep and so on. And so yes. really the, the, uh, the Plymouth plantation is what got America off the ground as opposed to the Jamestown colony that was based more on socialist ideas. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. It is. You know, th this Jamestown concept of socialism is what's being promoted in Washington, D.C. today. Absolutely, J.R., and, and it all goes back to the Baconian ideas, this great uh, esoteric uh, idealism mm -hmm. that comes down to us as socialism. You know, the, the, the battle is raging right now, Chris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sure is, especially with Barack Obama as the new president, of course. And uh, 
But yeah, it, it all does go back to, uh, to the time of Bacon. And we even show, we show the trail of Bacon's philosophy through America. Thomas Jefferson, for example, thought Sir Francis Bacon was one of the three greatest men in all of world history. Hmm. Uh, and there are some people who say that Jefferson believed he was uh, founding the new Atlantis through hmm. the uh, yeah. setting forth of the U.S. Constitution and so on. Hmm. Well, it's, it's really fascinating. These two videos talk about America being the new Atlantis and also the secret architecture of Washington, D.C. I hope you'll get these videos. And uh, you can order from them, them from us for thirty nine ninety five plus shipping and handling. You can either call 1-800-475-1111, the phone number you can find on the website here, or you can order it from the website directly. Uh, but be sure th and get them because you'll be able to understand the tale of two cities, shall we say, uh, Jamestown and Plymouth. And of course, uh, you know, Gentile Christianity or evangelical Christianity today in America believe in the conservative values of, of the Judeo-Christian ethic. And um, we believe in free enterprise and private property and so on. But there's a socialistic uh, group that stems from Bacon and Jamestown and, and down through history, the uh, various uh, secret societies who believe that uh, the world will be ruled by one of their own, and they're determined to set up a new world order. It's going to bring us down to the tribulation period and the battle of Armageddon, sure as I'm sitting here. So this will help you to understand. And you need to learn the history of, of the tale of these two camps, uh, Plymouth, and the Plymouth Brethren, the Christian ideal, and uh, private property, etc., and of Jamestown, and uh, the secrets behind Jamestown. Here they are, The Secret Mysteries of America's Beginnings, Volume 1 and 2. Get them today, will you? I'm J.R. Church with our guests. We'll see you again tomorrow with our analysis of the news.